The following program is intended for mature audiences. A Democratic Republic of Sports. The Sportsocracy with ESPN Asheville hosts Tank Spencer and Jeremy Green. And welcome back into the Sportsocracy. I'm Tank Spencer. Jeremy Green is alongside and it's time for another 2022 post-senior bowl seven round mock draft this one featuring my favorite team the tampa bay buccaneers uh yep celebrating the last couple of days of a of a super bowl championship before a new one (laughs) yeah fire them cannons no more tom brady and so it begins so it begins the rebuild or the retooling. However, uh, uh, Bruce Arians rebuild. says it's a retool. So yeah, he's, he's fucking full of shit. He's Kyle <laughs> Trask and Blaine Gabbert are quarterbacks. <laughs> so will they target a quarterback in the draft or not? First mm, pick. Yeah, that's a real, real easy question to answer. First pick coming up at twenty-seven overall, and it's Trayvon Walker, the. Uh, Defensive lineman out of Georgia. Yeah, here's what nobody wants to talk about. The interior of, of your line minus Vita Vea was not very good. Mm-hmm. Uh, Indomitian Sioux, not very good. Pass rush outside of Shaq Barrett, not very good. Your first round pick last year, Joe Troy, Tryon Shoyinka, not very good. So you draft a player that I'm not very high on. <laughs> Trayvon Walker is one of those guys that I have seen the talent. I've just never seen it consistently. Mm -hmm. Didn't play, uh, played right out of thousand snaps in college. The problem that I have with him is I, he is built like a Greek God and he looks like he should be the best player in this draft. And he's not for a guy that's played this much. He's still incredibly raw. There were a lot of mental breakdowns, uh, not an elite pass rusher. The thing is that with the talent that's around, that would be around him in the Tampa Bay defense, I think he can be the best version of what he can be. It's just going to take a little bit of time. This is an immediate replacement to Indomitian Sue for me. And with the with the rest of the players in that defense, I, I struggle to believe that he would be as irrelevant as he was at times at Georgia. I think it's partially a motor thing. There's no doubt the physical tools are there. It was just too inconsistent. There were some that say if he had if if there had been no Jordan Davis that he could have filled that role admirably. And, and, I, and that's and entirely I believe that. possible. It could be that he was on a defense that was so damn good that his inconsistent effort made him look worse than he was. Mm-hmm. To me, a lot of people really like this guy. Uh he so far has done pretty well in the pre-draft process, seems to be going up boards quite nicely. I, I mean, I think he would be a good pick here. It's just he's it, I'm very specific as to where he goes. Tampa, they have enough talent that you can develop him and Mm -hmm. i've seen you develop other players that were very similar to this jason pierre paul always kind of struck me this way uh shaq barrett always struck me this way went to tampa did better things than i ever thought possible trayvon walker could easily do the same thing in the second round at pick 60 overall you got him taking kyer elam the cornerback out of florida now this guy was being mocked in first rounds just a month ago yeah, the problem is that we, people like me started watching the tape and went, oh, that's why. Uh, he is the nephew of former Baltimore Raven, Matt Elam. Mm-hmm. And he kind of reminds me of Matt Elam. The good is really good. The bad is really infuriating. Got demolished on two big touchdowns last year that I can't get away from. It's just the inconsistent effort. If I saw, even if it wasn't the best I saw from Kyrie Elam, if I got his B game all the time, he would be a back end of the first beginning of the second round pick. Problem is, I see way too much of not that. Uh, I see mental mistakes, uh, breakdowns in coverage. He's a good tackler, not a great one, but he's very good as a run stopper right now. He's not the liability that some of the players on the outside for, for Tampa have been for quite some time. I think he would come in and be a day one starter just i don't know how you're gonna pay carlton davis but damn you better Mm -hmm. uh can he can he be better than vernon hargraves because that was the last florida cornerback we had uh he is better than vernon Hargraves. thank you (laughs) at least there's that at the uh 91st pick overall in the third round you got my bucks taking charlie kohler the tight end out of iowa state uh this was one of the few players that did not have a good senior bowl uh but i still love this kid i 
I still, no matter what happened, I have him right behind Jalen Weidermeyer and right behind Trey McBride as the third tight end in this class. I, I like him a lot. He's got very soft hands. He kind of reminds me of Gronkowski, if I was being honest. Okay. No, Tom, there's not going to be any any Gronk. So no. you're going to have to replace him somehow. One of the more ready-to-contribute-right-away tight ends in this draft, and you're going to have to do something weapons-wise. I don't think you can expect Kyle Trask to be the best he can be with Cameron Brait as your as your tight end. The two no. of them together, sure. But you're going to – tight ends are young quarterbacks' best friends, and no matter what you, no matter what you do, you're hemmed up against the cap enough – this is not going to be Aaron Rodgers. or it, It's going to be Kyle Trask or Blaine Gabbert. Mm-hmm. No matter which one it is, you need a, a security blanket for him. He was a great security blanket for Brock Purdy. Another in that Iowa State range that it maybe didn't live up to the expectations, but I think that was because our, our expectations were excised. Mm-hmm. Really good hands. The problem that I have with him is that I'm not sure how great of a blocker he's ever going to be, but in that Tampa system, I don't really care. Yep. And the fourth round, 131 overall, Marquise Hayes, guard out of Oklahoma. You're going to have to do something in the long term with your line because this is a team that's going to be killed up against the salary cap at least two years. Mm-hmm. This is what happens when you rob Peter to pay Paul to keep the band together and run it back. Well, here's the thing. Marquise Hayes, he's an impressive kid. This is an impressive guard. It is really hard to evaluate linemen in the Big 12 because it's such a gimmicky spread type of – that is just how they play offense. Mm -hmm. So it's hard to evaluate pass rushers because you're not seeing concepts on the line that are are real legitimate NFL concepts. And it's hard to grade offensive linemen because a lot of what they do, they're not going to be asked to do in the NFL. Marquise Hayes has some really high-level tape, and it's predominantly as a run blocker. He's a good pass blocker, but there is some high-level tape of him in the run game. Mm -hmm. And that's where I could see him. I mean, he's not a day-one starter, but you don't need a day-one starter. The line's good. This is just a kid that I couldn't see you letting get past because, well, everybody's going to get real expensive real quick. Is he lacking in size, though? I've got him listed at 218. No, he's 6'5", 318. Okay. They <laughs> that must have been a typo then, because this is six five two eighteen. I was like, geez, that is the smallest guard I've ever seen. No, in my he's life. Th- he's three. He's in that three fifteen, three twenty range. Okay, all right, thank you. Yeah, uh, that's. <laughs> I'm just taking the number you gave me. I'm gonna assume they fucked up, made a two instead of three. Because <laughs> if he's two hundred eighteen pounds, I'm about a buck sixty. Yeah, that's 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 what I was thinking. He has a gigantic head. I will. Uh, I, I don't know what size helmet he wears, but I guarantee you, it's bigger than Kenny Pickett's gloves. We're gonna have to get him a double X helmet. Uh, 169 overall in the fifth round, Neil Farrell, defensive tackle at LSU. This is another difficult evaluation because the good is very good. And I feel like I say this about every LSU player. The good is very good. The bad is not as great. Mm -hmm. Uh, now, and I have a funny feeling that you're going to say the same thing about him that you said about, uh, Marquise Hayes and his is not a misprint. He is a 240 pound defensive tackle. Okay. Yeah, that's not a misprint. He's actually that. He's thin. actually that. Thin. He's okay. gonna have to bulk up. I think he can play on. I think he projects as an end. Mm-hmm. Uh, really good run stuffer. He's a rotational piece now, uh, and I've seen Tampa Bay take some undersized defensive linemen over the Bruce Arians reign and do good things with them. If, if Neil Farrell was bigger, he would be a back end of the second day pick. I just don't know. This is one of those, and I say this a lot, he's going to add 10, 15 good pounds to the frame. Yeah, he's going to add about 40 pound, good pounds to the frame. May need to add 60 pounds to the frame to play the way that he does in the NFL. But the good is very good. He's he's more developed than you would think for a player that was this small. The technique's good. Just needs to get, he just needs to bulk up. That's There's really nothing else that i can say about him i mean he's he's strong enough as it is once he gets it to an nfl frame he could be a monster so he could play on the outside of vita in that in that three four could okay he could be a three four d end i've seen a lot of people project him as that Mm -hmm. what he does well that makes sense you would still have to add 40 good pounds 
that being the case. All right, tell me about Josh Ross, linebacker out of Michigan. That's who you got uh, the Bucks taking in the seventh round at pick number 245 overall. Uh, this is a guy that needs to not play anything but special teams for about two solid years. Super raw. One of the rawest players that you will see drafted in this draft. That's why he went so low. Uh, but now the the natural ability is intoxicating. What bothers me, he played a lot, and he's still unbelievably raw this is a two to three years down the line projection this could be a levante david replacement three years from now uh but i think he would come in and immediately be very good on special teams uh he's, i'm curious to see what he runs because the projections i've seen he's 6 2 225 so he, he's gonna have to bulk up a little bit anyway mm-hmm. if he runs a 4 8 which some people think he may not get drafted if he runs a 4-6, might get drafted in the fourth round. That's a big swing. It is a big swing. But the way he plays, he looks like he's faster than people think he's going to run. That's a good problem to have. I would much rather you run a 4-8 and it look and, and when I watch you on tape, you're in that 4-5 super twitchy range. Mm-hmm. Then you run a 4-5 and you look like you play at 4-8. I can't fix that. That gets into effort and, and things like that. I don't know how good he will ever be in coverage. It's just one of those. It's just a skill he doesn't really have. Uh, this sideline to sideline, good tackler, uh, very fluid. But he is going to have to. He's got to learn how to play linebacker. To, to me, he is a. He falls into. I think I said this about uh, Darian Butler. He's an athlete. He's not. A, currently, he's not a linebacker. That just so happens to be the position he plays on a football field. He ain't a linebacker yet. Right now, he is an athlete that puts on a helmet and mans a position. But he is very reactionary, and he, I I do think he could be good against the run immediately. With Tommy out of town, things are going to change for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, no doubt about that. I am kind of surprised you did, did, there there is not a running back mocked here to the Bucks. Well, because I don't know what you're going to do. I could see you paying Leonard Fournette, and if you do that, then you don't need a running back. Right. You just drafted one in Keyshawn Vaughn a year ago that can mm-hmm. replace what little you got from Ronald Jones. Running backs, to me, it is too damn easy to replace them. There are 60 running backs I could see going in this draft, but they're not going to. So undrafted guys, there will be undrafted guys in this draft that play legitimate snaps in the NFL next year. I just don't think that's one of your bigger needs at this point. All right, that's your 2022 post-Senior Bowl seven-round mock draft for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. You got any qualms with Jeremy's picks? Hit us up in the comments. Want to ask any questions about guys that have not been mentioned or guys that you might think might fit the Tampa Bay scheme? Hit us up uh, in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you get all of our team-by-team content here throughout the draft season. I'm Tank Spencer. He's Jeremy Green, and we will see you next time.